Hello and welcome back to IT Security Labs. And in today's video, we're going to continue our series on building a cybersecurity home lab. If this is your first time, I encourage you to like and subscribe. We have created three other videos where I'm showing you step-by-step -step instructions on how to build a lab for learning cybersecurity skills. And in this series, you're going to learn the basics of network administration system administration and in a safe environment. Today, by the end of th this video, you're going to be able to learn how to install VMware ESXi, which is going to be our main hypervisor for the lab, where we'll be virtualizing everything. You're going to create a storage network in PFSense because we need to separate storage network from our main network in the lab. Then we're going to create storage in VMware, vSwitches, then we also configure iSCSI storage. So this is going to be the core part of our lab where we'll be learning how to do these things. And just remember, you work for Trevor Phillips Industries, and this is our scenario here. And you are the IT person who is responsible for deploying the infrastructure. And by doing this and completing the deployment of the infrastructure, you're going to have a good understanding of how things are connected, how a network is going to be working, and also you become a better security person if you know how all these things work together. So that's why we're going to be deploying this network. Then you will need to monitor the network for performance, which we install Grafana for that. And you also need to make sure that you monitor it for security. So after we set up everything, we'll then start doing all the fun stuff. So here's our network diagram. Today we'll be installing our hypervisor on our Dell server right here. Then we'll also be connecting an external storage using iSCSI to that hypervisor. So this is where we are. All right, so why VMware? We chose VMware because it's widely de deployed in the enterprise. If you deploy this lab at home or in your own environment, you're likely to learn skills that will help you when you go out there to work in the workplace. So that's why we chose VMware. It's super easy to use and VMware ESXi can be used for free with limited features, but still it's usable for what we do. That's why I chose it. And if you're not familiar with virtualization, this might be a, just a quick primer for you. Think of it this way. You have physical computers like your computer, but in this case, instead of you just installing an operating system like Windows 10 on top of that computer, you put a hypervisor. And then the hypervisor acts as a middleman between the operating system and everything that you're going to install. That means that you can now carve the resources to assign to each and every virtual machine independently. And then the hypervisor X is a platform where you can decide how much resources you can allow to each machine. And in this case, you'll be able to run multiple virtual machines in this lab, and you'll be able to even run multiple networks as you'll see in a little bit here. So that's why we're choosing VMware. All right, so here is a sample lab that I have that I'm running in my home lab that is running in VMware. So this is what the final product. This is what it will look like. But for us to be able to install it, you want to go to Google and type download VMware ESXi 7. 7 is the latest version. So I encourage you to go with the latest version. Then you click right here and you'll be asked to sign in. And once you sign in with your own email address, uh, start a trial version. For VMware ESXi. In this, I, I already signed up for my trial. You see that I have a current evaluation. So you get a 60 day or 45 day evaluation for VMware ESXi. And once you sign up for that evaluation, you'll be able to download the operating system. And when it comes to the download, I want you to download for this particular lab, this one right here, the hypervisor ISO. 7.0 if it's if there's a newer download the newest one so manually download and once you download it you save it to your disk then burn it to a cd drive or to a usb i talked about burning things to usb using rufus so maybe look up how to use rufus to burn it to a usb or burn it to a cd drive then once you do that boot to your dell server or whatever system that you're using. All right, so once you, you start booting from the USB or the CD drive, this is the installation process right here. It will talk you, take you through the installer and there it goes. So, I'll, so to save us time, I'm going to fast forward through all these things here. If you're using a Dell server, you might have to press F11, 
then choose to boot from the USB. Uh, that's the option you have to choose in your Dell server. So uh, depending on what hardware you're installing it, make sure that you boot to load a USB drive. If you need any help with that, let me know in the comments, but that should be straightforward. You might have noticed that I'm loading VMware EXI 6.5. That's the ISO that I had, but in this lab, we want you to install 6.7. All right, so once it boots, you see right here, yours will say 6.7. Then all you need to do is let's hit enter to continue, 11 to accept. All right, so it will say, here's your storage, you find your storage capacity. So if you're using local storage and if your server has a bunch of storage, this will be the storage that it sees, okay? Use default for US, set up your root part, password. All right, gathering more information. And, uh, F11 for to install. All right, so when everything is done, you'll be faced with this screen to reboot, and then you can just reboot your screen. So as you can see, the installation for ESXi is super straightforward. Just make sure to boot from a USB or CD that he has ESXi installed and you get it working. All right, as you can see, we are done installing. And in this case, we got an IP HTTP 192.168.5.52. So if we go to that IP address, you'll be faced with this page, advanced. This is just for demonstration. Then I'll show you the one for my lab that I was able to install. And now we should be able to sign in as root and the password that we set up during the installation. Sign in. Mine is on 192.168.38.16. Remember our network from PFSense that means configured last time. And this is mine here. Uh, while we're here, let's go to our PFSense firewall. And this is our network, 192.168.38.1. And my VMware is on 192.168.38.16. If you want to see, I got this from and DHCP IP address, 38.16 right here. So this is it. You need to make sure that you reserve this. You can either just click on this one, plus in PFSense, and then this will reserve that IP address for, this, for that system. Or you can manually enter that IP address on your host as well. So this is what we have right now. Then. The first thing that we need to check in here is for you, you need to check your storage to make sure that uh, your storage is showing up here. If you're using internal storage, your data store would, would, would already be here. So for example, let's go back to the one that I configured. All right, so if you, if you don't have external storage, you'll see that your storage device will be identified here. So if this is if you installed it locally, Another option is to install VMware on a USB drive, which is what I did. I installed it on an external USB drive. But for you, if you have disks on your server, just install VMware there and you have your storage right here. And you have your network, networking, which is already configured for you. VM network, management network. These will already be configured for you. So this is great. So you are ready to move on to where we'll install everything. If you want to use external storage, two things that you need to do. First, you need to come to PFSense, create this storage network. And the easiest way to do this is just go to interfaces. If you have an additional interface on your firewall, uh, just add and make sure that you have another interface. Then of course, if you, you can click here and rename the this interface, enable the interface name it something like storage. In this case, I'm naming it storage two and save, then apply. In this case, if you also have a second storage, you want to make sure that this storage is connected to a different switch, ideally a 10 gigabit switch. So the interface from a PFSense goes to the interface on a 10 gigabit switch. Then that, that that's what you're going to connect then from the switch to VMware. So uh, if you wanted, you can also go to your DHCP. We set up our services, right? Um, DHCP server, make sure that 
your your network works uh, let's let's refresh this so if you go to your storage network here you can enable dhcp and put a range in this case i put 10 10 10 to 200 to 10 10 10 to 220 because I, that's what i want i want my storage network to have DH, dhcp but this new one that i just created is not showing up there because it's not connected physically to a switch so if it's not connected in pfsense this is what you will see and if it's connected to a functioning and th there's a connection you see these up arrows and as you can see storage net there is actually flow that's happening second part is if you have an external nest like a qnap or synology or one of those they will have documentation on how to configure iSCSI i have mine which is go, um, called emission mine is on 1010.200 10 and uh, let me just refresh here all right so once you once i'm in here for me i set up this iSCSI there is really good documentation that i found for iSCSI that you can use from spiceworks which is really good it shows you how to set it up if you haven't connected this before and it's in detail with screenshots so i'll link this for you for your own reference but i just want to show you what i have this is my emission guard with iSCSI and this is the iSCSI let's view it so i copied this right here and then went back to my vmware let me go to that one went back to my vmware here first thing that i did was come to my networking i created a new standard switch name it storage and i'll explain what this what is what this is doing so once you create a new standard switch you also want to create a vmnic and name this one something like storage port group or something like that in this case i named it iSCSI port group and then this iSCSI port group is going to be connected to my vm switch which is connected to a physical network adapter and this is where things get interesting so for this lab i have a physical network adapter that is connected to my pf sense on this storage network and this network adapter is dedicated to, to storage alone that way i don't have collision between storage data and my lab data so this is only for storage that's what storage is going to be using right here and then in addition to that you are going to have a vm net vm network and for me i i just have a management network here so for me i only have a management network and an iSCSI port network I'll create a virtual machine network later and make sure that it works. But for now, I just have these two so that they work. So this is how you are able to install PFSense uh, network for storage, uh, install ESXi to make sure that it works, configure it with your external NAS for storage. In this case, you will notice that my storage device has 4.5 terabytes so that is really good and the advantage of having iSCSI connected instead of local storage is that if say vmware dies on my host i can just spin up another host and point you to my storage so that is always an advantage of installing on an external usb drive however i've ran my other vmware environment on local storage and it still works fine so i encourage you for ease of use if you're brand new just install locally otherwise find a way to install on a usb drive or something external like i did here so that's what i wanted to show you if you haven't please consider liking and subscribing i really appreciate your contributions because this is free for you so i hope that you can help to spread the word out there and let others know that we are learning a lot so next time when you come back we'll be ready to start deploying virtual machine i'm actually going to add vcenter to this to make it look more enterprise like and then we can create templates of machines and start deploying our labs and the first thing that i want to do is to monitor this environment so for usage and everything so thank you for joining me i'll see you in the next video